Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video, I will show you how you can create powerful and professional API clients the fastest possible way. But why would we need to build such API clients? If we think a little bit, when we create APIs, they probably end up to be consumed by different several consumers. Now, if this happens, we need to provide a way that consumers can consume our API endpoints the easiest possible way. The core idea here is that we want to abstract away the entire HTTP anatomy from the consumers. They should in fact be able to call our APIs as simple as just calling a method on a certain class and providing appropriate parameters for that method. And the entire HTTP infrastructure should be totally hidden from them and in our API client we would take care about that. For instance, GitHub has a lot of API clients for different programming languages that allow us to consume the GitHub API easier. YouTube also has similar APIs, Spotify, you name it, any API provider usually provides API clients in different programming languages. So let me show you how you can create a professional API client for .NET application in just a matter of minutes. Before we start building the API client, let me show you the current setup. So first of all, we have here a very basic API and we have created here a mentoring application and we have this mentors controller. Right now I have implemented the full CRUD operations on this mentor resource. And to persist objects here, we are using an in-memory very basic list, a repository, and here we already have one mentor. Now here on the other side, we have a Blazor WebAssembly application. And this type of single page application is a typical example on where we would need to consume such API clients. And what I have done here in this application, I have prepared a little bit this fetch data component that we have in the Blazor's WebAssembly template. And here we have injected the HTTP client, but I have just re worked a little bit what we display here because we just want to display the name of the mentor, the first name and the last name. And obviously we have here also this collection of list of mentor details and we just use the HTTP client. In this case, we still get the weather information, but we will change this once we have completed everything. The last thing that I want to show you here that I think is very important when you're building APIs that will be consumed by a lot of different consumers and you plan to also provide API clients is that you extract your API contracts to a dedicated assembly. And we have here only two very basic contracts like this mentor create and update and we have this mentor details and both of them are just very, very simple records. Now that we have this out of the way, let's go to this API client project where we will implement or build our API client. And in order to, to do this, we will use a library. So let me go to manage NuGet packages and the library that we will use is called Refit. And here we will need to install two packages. First of all, this Refit package. So let's click on install. And then we'll also need to use this Refit HTTP client factory. And we'll see just in a few minutes why we actually need this second package. It's very, very important. Now you know that I am not the biggest fan of using libraries, but Refit is a really very powerful library, as you will see, that allows you to create such a very professional API client just in a matter of minutes, as you will see right now. Refit works on the basis of interfaces. So let's create here a folder that we'll call interfaces and let's add here a new interface. So add new class interface, let's call it interface and let's give it this name, I mentor client. In order to make Refit actually know how to call your API, you just need to define some methods on this interface and Refit will actually do the rest based on the methods that you define here. So let me just paste here the interfaces or the methods that we want to have in this interface. And that's also a good occasion to take a look into how exactly Refit works. And here we have this very first method let's create method async. So first of all we need to decorate our method with the corresponding HTTP method that we want to use and then we also need to provide this API endpoint that we want to call. Then we also can provide the body since this is a create we will have a JSON body and we can specify this, this body attribute and use this mentor create update as an incoming parameter. And what will happen in the background is that Refit will create an HTTP client and based on this information that you define in this interface, it will configure and make a request using that HTTP client. 
Similarly to what we had previously, we have also this get mentor by id async method. The new thing in this method is that here we obviously need also a dynamic parameter because we need to provide the mentor's id. And one other very cool thing about Rapid is that it uses some very common patterns that we are all accustomed with from ASP.NET Core. Like for instance, that you can place here in braces this id and if you specify this as an incoming parameter, then it will automatically bind the value that you provide here as a method argument in this placeholder that you define here when it makes the request. The next method is very simple because this is just the get all mentors and here we just decorate this with the get attribute and provide the endpoint that we want to call. The update mentor async method is once again a little bit more complicated because it combines some few things that we have seen in previous methods. And for the delete, once again, we just want to delete some resources and here we just need to provide this ID. And virtually for building an API client with Refit, this is everything that you need to configure. The idea is that what we want to achieve when we create such API clients, because as I said, we want them to be as professional as possible, we don't want to just simply expose the Rapid interfaces. And the reason to do this is because it is a very common scenario or it could happen at a certain point you just want to replace Rapid maybe with some other library or maybe you want to make and configure your own HTTP calls. So in that case, what we need in such a client library is that we abstract the underlying infrastructure away so that we can just expose a few methods that consumers can just very simply call with a few incoming parameters and then we will wire everything up in our API client library. And to this we will need a bunch of different classes and please be patient and stay tuned because you will see at the end everything will make sense and will be wired up together. Now what we need here is another folder that I would call endpoints and here I would create a new class that I will call mentors. Now in this class, we will need the client that we have defined previously because this is from where we will actually use these Rapid interfaces to make the calls. But now here are the methods that we want to expose in our class that will be used by the consumers. And this is the implementation for all the CRUD operations that we have defined in that interface. But a thing that needs to be actually taken into consideration here is that we define, for instance, this method create mentor ASIC. This is the method that consumers will call and consumers will know based on the signature of this method that they would need to provide the mentor create update contract. And once they provide this mentor update create contract, we know that we use Refit because we have this iMentors client and then we just call this method that we have defined on the interface. Similarly, we will do the same for get mentor by ID and the same goes all for all the other methods that we have implemented here, including this delete mentor async. Next, we'll need another class and we'll call this mentor API options. Now for this mentor API options, we'll just use a very simple property in this case, which is the base URL. We need this base URL because we need to provide this to Rapid so that Rapid knows exactly how to construct the URL to which it needs to make the request. So therefore we have this mentors API options and as we'll see the consumers will provide these options when we register our service or our API client in the dependency injection container of the consumer app in our case it, in case it will be a Blazor WebAssembly application. Then we need another class which will be the mentor API client and this will be the class that our consumers will in the end use to make the calls. So what we'll have here is a constructor and we'll have a property of type mentors and we get the mentors here in the constructor of this one and we set the property for it. And in fact, let's do this right now. So let's create a new directory. We'll call this extensions and in this directory, we'll add a new class and this will be a static class in the end because we will use this to create an extension method on the iService collection. So first of all, let's add the extension method, but we also need to take in an action of mentor API options. As actions work, the consumer will need to provide an instance of options when they register the service. So what we'll do here instead is we'll create a new instance of these options, and then we'll invoke the action with our own instance of the options. And this will actually set the options that come from the consumer to our options that we have defined here. And now let's see where we use these options. And here is how we actually add this Refit client. And when we configure Refit, we can leverage the power of HTTP client factory. 
And that's why we needed to install also the package for HTTP client factory. Because in our case, we can just simply say here, add refit client. We just provide here the iMentors client because this is the client that we want to add. And then we can use this configure HTTP client method that's specific for the HTTP client factory. And the only configuration that we want to do right in this moment is just to use the base address that we get from our consumers and to set it as the base address for this specific HTTP client. And for all services to be resolved correctly, the last thing that we need to add is a service for the mentors endpoints and a service for the mentor API client. Now, as a next step, we'll consume this API client in our Blazor WebAssembly application. And to see how this action of mentors API options is used, we need to just simply register this mentors API client by calling the extension method that we have previously created. And while we call this method, as it is an extension method, it's called on the services, so everything works, but we need to provide the action. And we provide the action here, and we say that the base URL will be equal to this one. And by the way, this is the base URL on which the API project is currently running. The last thing that we need to do is to come back here to our pages and to our fetch data, and also configure this fetch data component to work with our newly created API client. So the first thing that we'll do here is we want to inject the mentors API client. And now the last thing that we need to do is to come back here and instead of using the old HTTP client to get the data from this weather forecast JSON file, we use this mentor details await mentor client mentors and that get then get mentors async. And let me run the application and if we click on fetch data, we see that it loads the mentor that we have currently in the API. And the reason why I wanted to design the API client this way is that, for instance, if we want to create a new resource, we can just say simply await mentor client, and then we have mentors, and on the mentors, we have this create mentor async. And it's very easy and straightforward to be used because it reflects exactly our API structure. It has also very suggestive names that clearly express intent of what the API client is currently doing. If we want to update, we just call the update and everything should work fine. If we want to call the delete, we just call the delete. Obviously, we need to provide all the incoming parameters. In that case, we would need an identifier, for instance, this one, and it would simply delete my mentor. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like it so that others might discover it easier. And if you are for the first time on this channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are always notified when we have some new content here. And if you have any question or just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave your comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.